Well, I'm excited to share the word with you this morning. What a privilege I have to be able to do that every Sunday. And uh, we started off the new year talking about some foundational beliefs. On the first Sunday of 2015, we talked about the ultimate new beginning, which is the new birth being born again. Amen? It's not a greater message to preach than to be born again. Then uh, last week, we talked about building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And that is building upon our acknowledging Him as our Savior. Putting our trust in Him. That's the foundation of our faith. And, uh, you know, Peter said to Jesus, or actually, Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do men say that I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, you know, basically, that's right. And upon this rock, I will build my church. What rock is that? Acknowledging Him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about something that is also uh, very important. And that is the Word of God. The Scriptures. The Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Amen? Amen. And uh, I'm thankful that we have a children's church here at Crosswalk Fellowship. Where they learn from an early age about the Bible. We learn the Bible stories, which I believe are true. Amen? I do not believe they're made up. I believe that uh, uh, Jonah was swallowed by a big fish. Amen? I believe that Moses did part the waters of the Red Sea. I believe, literally, the Word of God. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that my kids grew up in church. My kids probably over their lifetime went four times a week to church. When you figure Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival meetings, special meetings, and you talk to those, Tony or Charity, they know the Word of God. They know it, even when they were kids, they knew it better than most adults because they, even when they didn't look like they were listening, they always heard it. <coughs> I believe the Word of God is important. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verse 16, we are told that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now notice that very first word. Everybody say it together. All. all. Not some of it. We don't pick and choose, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And listen to what he goes on to say. And is profitable for doctrine. You know, the popular term today is religious people or uh, things of that nature and saying it in a bad way. And I understand that uh, religion can be bad and tradition can be bad, but not all religion is bad, not all tradition is bad, amen? And that's just a way of saying I want to be able to see things the way I want to see them. Because I don't believe in all that doctrine stuff. Well, church doctrine simply means teaching. And basically, what our doctrine is here is just what we believe the Word of God teaches on certain things. And I believe in that. Amen? It's important to have an understanding of what we believe, especially in the hour that we now live in. You may think you're going to an a, a, a evangelical church, one who believes the Scriptures, and, and spend three or four months and start finding out they don't even believe you have to be born again. I believe in understanding the Scriptures. I believe that uh, there are some essentials before I call somebody my brother or my sister in Christ. You see, we're not all brothers and sisters in Christ. Only those who have come to God through Jesus Christ have, and have been reconciled back into a relationship through the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross 
that we are brothers and sisters. Yeah. So I believe that we have to have some essentials. Now, in everything else, I believe in unity. I mean, a person may disagree in some areas. I'm still going to call them a brother. You know, they may believe in post-tribulation. You know, I believe in free. And I'm not going to write them off because that really will not affect your salvation. It will just affect how you view what's going to come. Amen? And I heard one guy say, if you want to... Uh, believe in pre-tribulation by so-and-so's tape. You want to believe in post-tribulation by this other person's tape. And uh, another one said, uh, I just believe in pan-tribulation. I believe it all pan out. I say, pray for pre, prepare for post. Amen? <laughs> Live your life. And, you know, but at the same time, uh, uh, thank God, you know, I, I see Him delivering His people before wrath comes every time. Amen? Alright. I digress a bit. So let's Go back to the Scriptures here. Listen to what it says. It's profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof. Now, we won't have any of that, will we? For correction. You know, we, people nowadays are saying, you know, everything's okay. You shouldn't worry about what you do. God understands and God loves you. Yes, God does love you even though you do things. But He does have a standard that's holy and He does expect us to do our part in living the way we ought to because we are uh, portraying Christ. We are representing Christ. Do you know what Christian means? Christ-like. Christ actually, it meant little Christ. It means we're the, you know, they, say that they act just like the Christ. And at, at the time, it wasn't a good thing. They were making fun of them, basically. What does the scripture say? They were first called Christians at Antioch. So it goes all the way back to there. But I believe uh, uh, it goes on to say for correction and listen for instruction in righteousness. Now we are not made righteous by our actions. We are made righteous by the blood of Jesus. But now that we are made righteous, we need to act righteous. But not act. Don't act. Be righteous, amen. Live a righteous life. And that doesn't mean, you know, you got to perform and do this and do that. But as we read the Word of God and study the Word of God, we need to do our best to live the Word of God, amen. And, and it says grace teaches us to deny ungodliness. And, 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 and church, I just feel compelled that we need to talk about these things because there's so many people saying it doesn't matter anymore. But Jesus said, Be holy for I am holy. Amen. Or God said, Be holy for I am holy. You see, I believe the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation. So I believe it is the inspired Word of God. You know, there's a lot of folks that get revelation knowledge. And I love revelation knowledge. I love, And I believe that there are spiritual pictures in the Word of God. I've taught many spiritual pictures. But church, any spiritual picture must line up with the practical teachings in the Word of God. You can't say it doesn't mean that, but it means this. No, it means that, but in addition to it, there may be a deeper understanding spiritually that we can grab a hold of, and, and God can speak to us in different ways, but it doesn't take away the fact that the practical application is right there in each. Amen? You know, when we talk about the Bible, it's not just one book, as most of you know. It's 66 books called the Canon of Scripture. Within these 66 books, there are several categories such as history, poetry, prophecy, wisdom, literature, letters, apocalyptic. It was written by 40 different authors, some of which were fishermen, shepherds, prophets and kings. Most of them did not even know each other. <coughs> Most of them, uh, like I said, didn't know each other. Uh, they had no opportunity to compare notes of any kind, but yet it all flows together supernaturally because it's inspired by God. There's one author through many men. Amen? The Bible was written in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and the Aramaic. They were also written on three different continents. 
Africa, Asia, and Europe, and yet the Bible does not contain any historical errors. And that's not the only reason I believe the Bible is inspired, but also we, we've done a study on this. We talked about the, 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 the Bible before, not too long ago. But in addition to that, all these prophecies that were prophesied years and years ago, several thousand years ago, have all been fulfilled. Even the coming of Jesus, right down to his mom and dad. All of them have been fulfilled. Many of the prophecies that were prophesied for our day, we see being fulfilled. Things that you would never even think about uh, 50 years ago, we're seeing them be manifest today. I believe the Bible. And I believe it's necessary for us to have an understanding of the truth of the Word of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, it reads there, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the Word of men, but as it is in truth the Word of God which also effectively works in you who believe. You see, when we receive the Word of God, as the Word of God, it works in us. Remember in Hebrews it tells us the Word of God is alive and powerful. And when we receive it and believe it as the Word of God, it begins to work in us. How many of you want the Word of God to work in you? Amen. Hallelujah. At Crosswalk Fellowship, we believe the Scriptures are infallible. We believe that because we receive the Word of God, not as from man, but as from God, that uh, uh, John 10, 35, listen to what it says there. If He called them gods to whom the Word of God came, and the Scripture cannot be broken. Now, we can talk about that first part uh, of the verse at a later time. But I will say this just so you don't get confused. He's not calling them deity when he says they call them gods. He's really referring them to them being made in the image of God. But notice it goes on to say the Scriptures cannot be broken. That means you cannot pick and choose what you believe is inspired and what's not inspired. But there are many doing just that today. Well, this is actually the word, but this part is just this person's opinion. No, it's all, what do we start off with? What was the first word I said or in Scripture? All. All Scripture. Not some of it. Not the parts you like. Amen? But all Scripture is inspired by God. You can't pick and choose. But there are many that are doing just that today. They want to pick and choose. And they say, well, you know, there's some good examples in there, but it's just, but you know, written by fallible men. Well, men may be fallible, but God's not, amen? amen. And His inspiration is not fallible. They want to skip over what they don't agree with. Otherwise, they'll have to accept it as truth. Reminds me, again, of what one of my uh, Bible college teachers used to say all the time. Men will not allow the truth to interfere with their thinking. And there's a lot of that going on, amen? I sometimes see people in articles and, and Facebook and whatever, you know, where they'll say these things are not scriptural at all. And when somebody challenges them, not in a, 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 a nasty way, but just, well, what about this? They just want to dismiss it or not reply to it at all. I'm not into arguing the Bible, but I don't mind debating. But you know, if you don't believe the scriptures are infallible, there's really no debating because I'm just trying to argue with your opinion how you're going to do that. But if you both believe the Bible is the final say on any matter, then you can discuss it. And over the years, there are some things I've been wrong on, believe it or not. And I, I'll admit that. There's, you know, especially when I was younger, I mean, I looked at some Bible uh, professors and I just thought they were right next to God. If they said it, it, it must be gospel. But then as I studied you know, more and learned more how to study on my own, I began to see that they, they missed it in a few areas. 
You know, it's good to have people you respect and, and uh, trust, but at the same time, you always still need to make sure it lines up with the Word of God. Be like the Bereans. What did they do? They searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things be so. What did they search the Scriptures? Why? Because it's the truth. It's the Word of God. That's our final word of authority. You know, the biggest difference between Protestants and the Catholic Church is Protestants believe uh, the church is based upon the Bible and Catholic Church believe the Bible is based upon the church. In other words, the church has the final authority, so they say whether Scripture is correct or not. But the, but the Protestant or you know, non-Catholic or however you want to say it, they, they believe whatever the Word says goes for the church not what the church says goes for the word. Does that make sense? I'm grateful for God's word for many reasons. And I'm just going to share just a few of them this morning. The first reason I'm grateful is we are built up spiritually as we nourish ourselves with the milk of the word. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, it reads, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Now I'm reminded of little Winter. And when you go to give her her bottle, you know what she says? Yum, yum. She says about food now, but before she started getting food, she's like, yum, yum. And that's why we need to look at the Word of God, amen? Get that Word up. Yum, yum. Spiritually, we're being fed with, with the uh, pure milk of the Word. Why is it pure? Because it's the Word of God. Amen? If it wasn't the Word of God, it wouldn't be pure. But the pure milk of the Word. If we're going to grow spiritually, it is imperative that we read and study God's Word. And if, if you haven't developed a habit of reading God's Word, just start small. Amen? I mean, even if it's one verse a day, if you're not reading the Word at all, read a verse a day. How hard is that? Most, most of us have smartphones today. How many of you here have a smartphone? Okay, there's two-thirds, two-thirds. You know, you can get a Bible application and just pop it up every day. Oh, uh, Lawrence helps me out every morning. First thing I wake up, I look at my phone, I got a message, and I read it, so I read a verse of Scripture the first thing every morning because he sends me a, a, a verse like how, how many of you others get that on okay several of you so uh, but but start small if you're not doing anything at all start small and we're not doing it out of a works mentality but we want to grow by the pure milk of the word amen so if, if you're going to do that you do it by the word of God then work your way up from there next thing you know you'll be spending time in the Word. And, and you'll notice a difference in how you look at the day. Amen? Secondly, God's Word will keep you pure. In Psalms 119.11, it reads, Your Word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You see, you keep that Word because again, it's alive and it's powerful and it's active. And, and it will give you power to overcome temptation when temptation comes your way. And then third, this is one that's really, I mean, they're all important, but this is one I want you to really think about. In Psalms 119, 105, it reads, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You need to memorize that verse this week. And you need to say that verse. I mean, I believe this is something God speaks to me right now. Amen? You need to, to memorize that verse and speak it every day. How many take that challenge today? Okay, if you can, try to write it down. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, I often tell people, life is about choices. If you continually make unwise choices, your life is going to be messed up. I talked to a young man here just a couple weeks ago. 
And like a year and a half ago, we sat down at the table. His, his life was a wreck. I won't go into details. His life was a wreck. And I, said, I called him by name. And I said, life is about choices. If you want your life to be different, you need to start making different choices. Because he made stupid, stupid, stupid choices. Did he listen to me? No. Talked to him a couple weeks ago. Guess what? His life is still messed up. Because he made more stupid choices. Your word is a lamp to my feet. A light to my path. Wrong choices will keep us from God's promises. God wants you to be blessed, but if you don't follow His plan for your life, in a, in a sense, you're tying His hands. We know God's plan for our lives through His Word, but if we never get into His Word and have an understanding of His Word and spend time with Him, how are we going to go in the right direction to receive the promises that He wants us to have? In 2 Timothy 2.15 it reads, Study to show yourselves approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, when you start studying the Scripture, it, it's work sometimes. I mean, if you really want to study, I, I'd like to have a class sometime just to in case you're here and you don't know how to study the Bible, when you say, well, what do you mean studying the Bible? How do you study the Bible? I'd love to teach a class on how to study the Bible. You see, study is a little different than reading. Reading is just, you know, God speaking to you, you know, through the daily Word, and that's good. It's hard for me to do that because I have, I'm a Bible teacher, and I love to dig, and, you know, I was teaching in Romans one time. We went about a year in it, and Cheryl says, you know, you may not want to go so in-depth. <laughs> not everybody's well, I don't know how she put that but you know that, that degree of a student it's hard for me to imagine that but I, I know it's true because I love to just study I mean I love to look up the meaning of the words I love to you know find you know just find out everything there is I mean I could spend three weeks on one word and I did <laughs> So we just, we just decide we're never going to get through this <laughs> because I just get so involved in that type of a study. But it's important that we study the Word of God. Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Everybody wants to go around saying, you know, the truth will set you free. That is not correct. It's knowing the truth. That the truth never set anybody free until they knew the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And we know the truth how? By studying the Word of God. Rightly dividing. That means putting it into context. You know, what is this saying in this particular situation? In Joshua 1.8, it reads there, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In other words, this book needs to become a part of us. It needs to become a way of life for us. We need to read it. We need to meditate on it. We need... To, to speak it forth and believe it. Amen? It says we're to meditate. That means to uh, think deeply, continuously, to reflect or to contemplate on it, that we might do, uh, that we might know what to do according to God and according to His Word and be prosperous and be successful. As we meditate on the Word of God, it will become, again, part of us. And it will affect our lives. Now, you might say, well, Pastor, I can't meditate on the Word day and night. Well, to be, to be practical, you know, you're not going to be able to sit down and just, you know, hover over it. But, you know, you can keep it in your mind all the time. 
just like I said, that verse, you can take that verse and just, you know, think of it over and over during the day. Just let it resonate in your spirit. And then before long, I mean, that just becomes a part of it. It just, you know, uh, we don't talk much about memorizing Scripture anymore, but still, it's still good to memorize Scripture. The important thing is that His Word resonates in your heart. That when a situation comes up, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is faith and not fear. Amen? And the only way to do that is to receive His Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There are, there's so many things that, it, it, in our time that help us. Again, the Bible apps. You know, you can just turn that on and, and listen to it. If you don't have a smartphone or something like that, you know, they're, they're on CD, Bible on CD. Uh, there's so many different ways that we can just meditate and listen to the Word of God. Sometimes, you know, I, I do some painting. I mean, I can listen to chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter while I'm just rolling that painting on. You know, and, and I tell you, I don't really lose a beat because I can pray and, and I'm in there all by myself and I'm just putting paint on and I'm praying and I listen to the Word. I put a little worship on and, and I just keep on going. I could be having church the whole time. Amen? You see, we waste so much time when we could be applying the principle of meditating on the Word of God in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, we can read it. We can meditate on it. We can memorize it. We can, we can sing it. Amen? We can listen to it. But the important thing is to make the Word of God a priority in your life and enjoy the fruit that comes by having His Word hidden in your heart. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, I know it's just a simple message this morning, but I pray that somehow you would help us to understand the importance of your word. I know this is said over and over. It has been said over and over for years and years, but Lord, it is still the truth. And Lord, I just thank you for those that are here that understand that Scripture is inspired. And it is powerful. It's more than a book some men wrote. It's a book that you wrote through men. Lord, I just pray for those that have been deceived into believing otherwise, and I pray, God, that you would open their eyes to see the truth of your word, and you would, that you would bring victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just take a moment in your own way, just give him a word of thanks and praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify your name this morning. We understand that we serve a God who created the heavens and the earth. We serve our Creator this morning. We thank you for your goodness and your grace and mercy. We love you this morning, Lord. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to share one last thing with you. This just came to mind back when we pastored in Wisconsin. And some years ago now, we saw some unusual and powerful manifestations of God's Spirit. I mean, some things that would just, we were in awe of, actually. And I remember one young lady that God just did so many powerful things in her. And I preached a sermon, I don't remember what it was, but she put a note. I usually didn't like notes in my door. You know, usually that's somebody complaining about something. They didn't have the nerve come talk to you about so They wanted to just write it out and stick it in your little thing on the door there. But uh, in this particular case, she thanked me for preaching the Word. She said, through all those things that happened, 
it was the word of God that spoke to her and brought change to her life. See, that's how, that's how powerful the word of God is. Amen. I, I, I thank God for supernatural manifestations. I think they're great. You know, I don't live for them. I think they're great when it's, when it's God doing something. But you know, I don't. If we don't see something like that, I don't say, "Oh, we didn't have a very good service today." We had a good service because His Word went forth. Amen. Praise went up. The rest of it's a bonus. You know, there, there are some folks that, you know, if something weird didn't happen, we didn't have a good service. But uh, you know, sometimes God does weird things, but that's not what we live for. <coughs> We live for an opportunity to come together in corporate worship. We, we live for coming believing that somehow God will speak to us through His Word and bring change to our lives. Amen? And if we come expecting that, I believe we'll see it. Amen? Hallelujah. Yes. You know, you're saying that. I just, I just have to say this. Um, I'm thankful for the Lord that was like that. It was based on feelings, what's going to happen. The best way I describe it is like a roller coaster ride. What are we going to do this Sunday? And we were not taught the foundation of Christ and His Word. Only did I understand that is when I had to leave the church and dig the scripture on my own, not through anybody else, who I was, who I am in Christ, because I had no idea. At the church, I was trying to be someone else. That person leadership, that person leadership, because that's who I was always compared to. But I did not know Jesus or who he was until I left the church and found out myself. So I do, I thank you for that, for um, going to the church that believes the Word of God, not just based on feelings of what kind of roller coaster we can ride this Sunday. I believe the Word. Amen. And I believe you do too. I know I'm probably preaching to the choir this morning, but at the same time, there's a lot of deception going on. And as your under shepherd, I feel the responsibility to bring these things up. I know that maybe it's not shout material, but you know, I didn't come to hear you shout. I came to hopefully see you grow. Amen. And uh, I'm excited uh, about the days to come because we are talking about foundational things. I know this is Christianity 101. But it's important. And, uh, pray for those. And, you know, there's been some good brothers and sisters, even pastors and evangelists, that have gotten sucked in to uh, erroneous doctrine teachings. And let's lift them up that they might see, uh, you know, what God's speaking to them truly. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, yes, if not before, we'll see you next Sunday. And as always, if, you know. Uh, if you have need of prayer for anything, uh, come tap me on the shoulder and we'll talk. Amen. And, uh, the church doesn't end just because we dismiss. You know, I'll be around here probably at least a half an hour. And uh, if you have uh, need, just we'll pray about it. Amen. And God bless you.